Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we will talk about a very important topic in making performant backend applications called in-memory caching. In this video, we'll be using ASP.NET 7. However, everything that you see here can also be applied from .NET 2.1 onwards. So if you are new to the channel, I'm Sahan and I have been working in the industry for over like 10 years now. Uh, currently, I work for GitHub as a senior software engineer and uh, I also frequently blog in uh, sahansera.dev as well. This video is actually related to a blog post that I created about two years ago. Uh, you can visit the following URL or scan the QR code to visit the blog post. I will also post a link in the description down below as well. So before we dive into the details, let's take a think about a scenario. Imagine we have a backend application making another call to an external service. Let's say a get call to API slash users. We then do some computation on top of that and return a response back to the client. Right off the bat, there are a couple of problems with this approach. What if the response payload is pretty big or the latency is so high, meaning that it takes a lot of time to come back? That's not very good. What if the computation takes too long, that it takes a few seconds to process the request and send back a response back to the client? What if multiple users access the same data concurrently? Then are we going to do all of the above over and over again? So caching is a mechanism used to store frequently accessed data in memory so that it can be retrieved quickly when needed so that we don't have to fetch it from the original source. So by using that, let's see how we can improve this approach uh, a bit further. So we are going to be using the same scenario we saw earlier. However, now we have added in memory caching on top of that. So let's say we have two users, right? Accessing the same service that we talked about previously. So the first user accesses and then we will first check whether the data is in the in-memory cache. So if it is not already there, we call it a cache miss. So that in that case, we need to make the call to the external service and get the response back. So in this case, let's say a list of users. Now what happens is we will store that information uh, in the in-memory cache so that whenever someone else accesses that, we will first check in the in-memory cache and then now we have a cache hit. So we will return that back to the user. So we don't have to make that call again uh, to the external service. So it doesn't have to be like multiple different users. It can also be the same user as well. So we can actually scope it down uh, to a specific user or a particular request that's coming in and then, you know, cache whatever the data that we need to on a per user basis. Or we can also, you know, open that up uh, if it is like a, a bunch of, you know, data that's shared among multiple users, we can also cache a data uh, in the in-memory cache. Now that we have an understanding of how the in-memory cache is going to work, let's see how we can implement this by using ASP.NET. So before we move on with the coding side of things, let's see how this works in action. So what I'm going to do is we will use the .NET CLI and uh, we'll run the project by using the .NET run command. And then we have the server up and running at localhost and port 5001. So if I go over here and do a refresh, yeah, it's up and running. So I will click on cache it and then it says now we have a cache user over here and then if I try to click on cache it again and again you would see that there are no other requests going on over here. I have set a 10 second timer as well. Uh, what's worth to note over here is that we have a call that says like sending HTTP request get to whatever the endpoint or the external service that we have. Because I have set a time to leave all the TTL um, over the cached entries so after 10 seconds, uh, this should expire. So if I click on cache it again, yeah, it, it should send a request like this. So if I click on cache it again before it expires, it won't send a request uh, back again to the external service. So if I click on clear it, and then now if I click on cache it, now it has sent a, another request back to that external service. So if I keep on clicking cache it, it won't send a request because we have that stored in the in-memory cache. So now let's see how we can implement this. So in order to create the ASP.NET application, we will use the .NET CLI, which is much more easier. So it would be like .NET new web API dash N in-memory cache net core or whatever the name we want to apply. And then uh, we will create a new solution and then add that project onto that solution. And then we should be good to go. So you should be having a uh, folder structure which is pretty similar to the one that you see on the right hand side. So now that we have created a project, I will walk you through the actual code itself and then 
show you how the request flow goes through the entire application and uh, how we are making use of the iMemory cache as well. So let's open up the project and let's go through the code and see how the request flow works. Uh, I have opened up the program.cs first so that I can show you uh, what kind of services we are registering. From high level, uh, I will tell you like this is the user service that actually makes the a HTTP request under the hood to the external service. And then we have a wrapper around that that's called cached user service to add the caching layer on top of the user service. And then a cache service that actually represents the, you know, the entirety of the caching uh, of the system so that we can come to a single place and see, you know, what kind of services that are cached uh, throughout our system. And over here we have the custom interface called iHttp client where which will be actually making the call by using the HTTP client factory that comes with .NET. So that's pretty much everything that you need to understand from a high level on the program.ca side of things. So what I will do next is we will go to the home controller first and then see what we have over here. So we have the index method, uh, the cache user function that is uh, that gets invoked when we click on the cache it button and then the clear cache uh, action as well. I will also open up the user service first. So let's imagine, you know, let's forget about the caching layers and stuff like that. At a bare minimum level, uh, this is what you can expect. It's a very, very simple service that uh, uses our HTTP client and makes a call. And that's pretty much it. I'll go back to the home controller first. Now what I will do is I'll click on cache. Yeah, so it invoked the cache user function. And then uh, I'll step into that. So we have the cache user service, which I talked to you about earlier. Uh, this is actually like a caching layer on top of the user's service. So I will also go into the cached, uh, get cache response. And this is where we actually use the cache provider uh, that we have. And then we will talk to it and say whether we have an entry for that particular object. And then if that's the case, we will return out of it. If not, and then we will enter into a semaphore. So everything that will that we see over here will be kind of logged. Let's say, for example, we have concurrent uh, users, you know, accessing this thing, and then we have this long running function or whatever the, the thing that we want to run. So that in that way, we can make sure that we won't run into deadlocks and things like that. Uh, and also I have to mention that iMemory cache by design, it's thread safe. So if you are only using the iMemory cache, uh, just to, you know, cache objects and stuff like that, you don't have to use the semaphore. But in this case, since we have like external call that we are making under the hood, uh, just to demonstrate how we can make use of locks, um, I have used a semaphore slim. Uh, we enter into that and then we make the call. Uh, we check uh, in the cache provider again to see whether we have an um, you know, object because by that time, some other request might have already you know, done that and uh, have had like a cached object. So in this case, we don't because we only have a single user at the moment. And then we pass in the function, which is actually uh, you know, a task. So in this case, here we have the get users async function, uh, which we saw earlier in the user service. Uh, it could be anything, uh, any function as well. And then we call that and then we get the data back. Yeah. So here, if we look, have a look. Yeah. So we have this, uh, you know, data objects coming in and then we will set the cache uh, by using that. So the cache key is underscore users. You can set it to anything you want and the uh, object itself and then the entry options. So this is where we say, you know, what kind of options that we expect uh, when we set this object in the cache. So in this case, I have set a sliding expiry for 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, it will expire. So whenever someone makes a call uh, after 10 seconds, uh, we will have to make another call to get the latest data back. That's pretty much it. And then finally we release a lock and then uh, we return the user's object. So we will only pick the first object out of that just for the demonstration. And then we will redirect the user back to the index page. Yeah, so here we uh, do another check to see uh, whether we have got the data in the caching um, service. So in this case, it's gonna be null because by the time we arrive here, we have spent more than 10 seconds. So that's why we see the user's object as null. But, uh, what I will do next is I'll run this uh, quickly and then show you uh, what happens after that. Cool. So it says no cache entry, that's fine. And then if I click on cache it, and then I'll just click on run. And then now if you hover over this, now we can see the user's object that's coming in from the cache. So if I run it back again, and then click on cache again, run it back again yeah so it hasn't expired so we get it again from the cache so uh, 
as you can see we get the data object back from the cache so just to summarize uh, what we talked about earlier uh, we have the build object and then we are using that build object to register our services and then here we have the user service um, and then the caching layers that we talked about earlier i also want to mention that uh, you don't have to have it like ad scoped uh, for each and every single just to you know scope it down to a single request level but you can also have like add singleton as well uh, if you know the data is shared uh, between different users and you don't have to make a connection each and every time uh, to the in-memory cache and then uh, from a high level uh, we have this iCache provider that actually wraps the functionality around the iMemory cache itself we basically use di container to inject the iMemory cache uh, itself and then uh, we will use whatever the functions that we have available on the iMemory cache itself so we will make calls like try get value set the value and then remove as well and that's pretty much everything from a high level point of view but if you have any comments feedback or questions just let me know uh, down below in the comments i'm more than happy to help so thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one cheers